Hey guys, it's Turok. Uh, today the... I'm sorry, I'm trying to get my presentation right. The One Piece chapter just came out. I'm going to review it. It's a good one. It, it's, and it, it doesn't help confirm some of the stuff I just said. Uh, oh boy, but so much happens here. Uh, well, a lot happens and that, that, it's like a, also kind of a short chapter and it's like, I feel like we could still break down a lot of stuff. So I'm partially, it seems like uh, what I said before, uh, I made a video yesterday going over this in more detail about uh, Vegapunks being, uh, one of the Vegapunks being a traitor. And I briefly went over it in a video when I did a post chapter video of last chapter. And I uh, was trying to, I had given my first suspicion and I was given a different motivation or reason why I thought one of the Vegapunks, uh, spoilers, for which one I think, or like if you don't want to hear this, um, no. uh, I thought at first it was, I still, th I, um, up to this point, I've been thinking it was Lilith, and in the first point where I brought this up, I thought maybe she was trying to work for the word government, and doing it to keep her, safe her own skin, and, um, and then in yesterday's video, I was thinking it was her motivation was to go out there and get out, uh, what's the word? Get into the limelight? Uh, limelight. Uh, how does that go? What's that phrase? Basically, get out of the shadow of Vegapunk Stella and be her own person. And that's kind of where I'm thinking was the same thing. Uh, no, that's not the same thing. Um, so then I thought maybe it's Sh uh, Shaka because he might be the opposite and he might be trying to also go save his own skin. Um, Hello, Wilder. So, um, we got some Scooby-Doo type stuff going on today. Um, far enough from somebody else said that. Uh, so, so I guess I should just get started on this. First thing of interest today is that, um, is that we got a cover story today. Oh crap, where's the chapter? So today's cover story, we see where the... Well, a, uh, Vegapunk first meet, met the Gorosei, as we saw uh, two or three chapters ago, uh, when Kizaru was talking to uh, Saturn, the the, sh the one with the uh, locks of hair, and Kizaru asked Saturn about meeting Vegapunk, and he talked about, yes, I had years ago. We get this little cover story, and it's just... Uh, it shows Vegapunk in the for in the front, forefront, front, and the five Gorosei standing behind him in their probably their hall, that main area where they're doing their business during the day. And uh, so this must be, uh, and you can see Vegapunk's young. This is probably I'm guessing here too that this is probably why he uh, dissolved Mads when he got this audience. So I'm thinking this happened. 22 years ago, right after, uh, around the, right before, this was before, right, right around the same time O'Hara was destroyed. Uh, because at that point, I'll double check the backtrack, but I recall that's where Vega, before we see this chapter, uh, this cover story, we got from that flashback Dragon and Vegapunk having a conversation. Also, I gotta try and slow down today. Forgive me if I speed up. I know I slur badly. So if I sound slower, I'm doing it because I have to do it so I don't slur what I am saying. So going back here, when Shaka was talking to the other Straw Hats about the O'Hara incident, we briefly get a flashback and we see the Vegapunk. Actually, no. You know what? I was wondering something I was curious about. I can't be that time. Let me see here. One second. Pull this up. No, that's unlikely. I bet this this cover story I bet is further back because comparing the way Vegapunk is drawn, and this is chapter 1066, if you go back to that one, and you have the flashback from 22 years ago, uh, Vegapunk actually does look older here. So what, how old was he? He's 43 at the time, but now when you go to this uh, cover story here, he looks at least 10 years younger, I'm guessing. So they probably first, 
worked with him or talked to him before he officially dissolved MADS. Let me check here. Where was that again? Let's go back. I keep... Uh, right here. So he says... Let's see. Let's see the flashback again. Come on, pull up. La 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 la. la. Yeah, it makes me very good. Yeah, so he uh, he left there. Yeah, he's upset to find out. I mean, he could have come. He could have became part of uh, uh, the government thing beforehand, some years before this, I assume, and uh, just hadn't talked to Dragon in some time up until they meet here at O'Hara. But perhaps not. But there's definitely a time difference here. I thought maybe that there was the same year, but now that I looked at this drawings, Oda is clearly drawn. Vegapunk younger here in this co recent cover story compared to what we see him 22 years ago. So he met the girl say quite a long time ago. I'm going to guess roughly 30, to th yeah, it's 10 years before, 30, 30 32 years ago. And uh, we don't know. I'm wondering if that's where they try to talk him into working for them. Maybe he wasn't ooh, interested just yet and he wanted to. Uh, continue doing stuff his own way and we maybe the next cover story or two will help lead us to understand why he hey why he dissolved it and maybe I was thinking too well wow, you're gonna push everything I was thinking come on, sit up here I was thinking that maybe from the last chapter cover that the infighting among his other three I don't know if he'd call them assistants I'm sure they wouldn't want to be called that. Judge, Queen, and Caesar, the infighting among them could have helped him decide to break it up because he didn't want to deal with them. Well, maybe he could have kicked them out, but maybe the whole organization was them all working together. And he just decided to solve it and work by himself as he has been for the last 22 plus years. So that was just, that's my speculation on part of, or at least part of the reason why Vegapunk decided to dissolve the mads and the second obviously is he also he wanted the government funding to help him make his stuff and that's especially why he didn't want to go work with dragon and a revolutionary army because they have no funding in which to help someone like him achieve what he can dream up and make possible and even now i believe he said a f several chapters ago in this arc that he still has problems making uh, everything he wants to with their funding. This also has me partially wondering, with the girl say Saturn, St. Saturn arriving soon at Egghead, I'm kind of wondering if they're going to try to offer Vegapunk one more chance to um, stay with them. I don't know how they would help him. Uh, he, he, he can't, I don't think, forget what he uh, knows about O'Hara. But i um, wondering if they'll try to extend it. Was that being kind of olive branch? Probably not in the, no, probably not in this situation. Because I'm th thinking about how they would not want to truly lose Vegapunk's scientific uh, genius. Because they really can you need this now to help take control of, uh, to, to continue their monopoly on the world, control of the world, essentially, as well as help bolster what they need because they've uh, just disbanded the warlord system. And that, that's something they never really, I doubt they liked having too much anyways, since most of them didn't really help much. Uh, and then eventually we found out some of them were just using it for their own agenda. So, uh, yeah, I'm just thinking they could, they could, with Vegapunk, they may try to give him one more chance because they really need him in this case over, like, uh, they probably wouldn't do this under normal circumstances, in other words. Um, so, yeah, so let's get on to the chapter. Also, I got some notes to pull up. A couple, a map here. Oh, where is that? Well... There we go. So, we continue 
Wait, how did that last chapter exactly left off? I know that the... That's right, so Sentumaro was fighting Cypherpole at the lower areas. Uh, and then, yeah, then... Uh, Shaka informed them that there was a problem going on, and they decided to break up in groups. Except for Luffy and Zoro. And then we, uh, we usually saw Bonnie... Yeah, so... Yeah, that's right. The last chapter ended with uh, Big News Morgans. Let's get on with the chapter. So, we last left off. The, the chapter jumps ahead with the Straw Hats and uh, Seraphim shortly after we last saw them, <clears throat> where they decided they would start f searching for uh, Vegapunk Stella. And they, so they formed search parties here uh, with, the, with um, only... Uh, Shaka, Luffy, Zoro, and um, uh, Cypher Pole, uh, <laughs> um, Kaku, and uh, Luchi are still uh, in this room. Everyone else has now gone out to look for uh, Stella. So, let's see. So, we start out here with Shaka. Uh, hearing the explosion from Pythagoras that happened, what we know happened to Pythagoras, and trying to communicate with him over the. Uh, uh, so they have here, I realize that the things they have in their ears are actually radios, and uh, they, they look kind of like the scouter style. Um, the, um, the. Everyone wore in uh, the early parts of Dragon Ball Z, the Frieza and his, uh, all the people working for him, all the warriors. Um, so, Vegapunk uh, Shaka is uh, sh trying to respond to him over the radio, and we're seeing those other scene at first of uh, near uh, nearby, where the smoke is. Uh, so this must be outside, right? So this lab building must be inside that big dome. I guess with the uh, that we saw fl it's floating up on clouds above the rest of the island. So there's a whole lot more space here than I really uh, realized. I'm trying to picture where the Sunny was then. The Sunny must be sitting outside there somewhere. Uh, so, anyways, we see the smoke billowing out of this one portion of the lab, which looks like it's. Uh, what I have a map here. They show a map here later of the lab. I'm guessing that's the. Um, yeah, right, it looks like that's the, that's going to show us here this map of the building, and they got it, it looks like one big complex, but they have it separated into three sections. The main one with the, where I think the command room's at the top is called A, building A, to the left of it is building C, and building B is on the right. Uh, I don't know, I should probably sit the other way. And this looks like this, where Pythagoras was tacked, was in building C. Actually, I think they sit in the last chapter. Let me check quickly. Because there's a lot of... Uh, the characters here are all spread out, and they tell us where they are. So I'm trying to keep this up where they are. Let's see. I know he tells him he's there. Yeah, third floor of Tower C. Tower C, yep. So he's in Tower C. That's where they're showing the smoke in the last chapter. In this chapter now. So yes, this first scene out here is outside the building, giving us an idea of it. And we, yeah, that clearly, too... Uh, I was first looking at the map, the little map showed the little squiggly lines on top, and they are showing, uh, what's, so yeah, I, I'm holding here a, um, a map of the, uh, of, uh, the, of the, uh, on here that I'll be referencing, uh, on, uh, throughout this. Also, where'd my other notes go? Oh yeah, my search party thing, here we go. So, um, yeah, the, uh, the, the building here, here too, you can see, uh, see some of the, uh, damage that the uh, Seraphim did when they attacked right before uh, um, Lilith and Edison were able to stop them two chapters ago. Did they show some of that damage here? They showed... Oh yeah, that's right. They were showing them... I'm going back a bit. You can see them approaching... They were approaching the uh, main building there two chapters ago there, and they started striking... Right, you can see how they started destroying... Now, I read through these a little too fast, so I sometimes just like I speak, speak too fast. And I seen some of these old images better now, where they were some of the damage was done to the main lab. <clears throat> Anyways, let's continue. 
So Pythagoric here, I, I mentioned before how Logic seems to be quite a calm guy. I think in this chapter he's starting to slowly lose a little bit of his cool here, and he's trying to get a little like up, worried about what's going on. <clears throat> so he's looking, trying to communicate with. Uh, so they all have those radios on, right? Yeah, I think, and I think everyone else now has them as well. And as we'll see, they all can hear each other. So he's trying to get a hold of Pythagoras, and he's checking monitors. Uh, he's in front of his command. Uh, Command uh, module, not modules, uh, screens here, and he's got some. You can see some uh, of the uh, other areas that he can still view with Denden Mushy cameras, and so he's done because he can't uh, contact Pythagoras through the radio. He has one of the snails looking around, and we get a little glimpse of this one in that area of building uh, building C where Pythagoras is. And we see here a shadowy figure jump at the Denden Mushy and take it out. And there's like an explosion when it does that, it looks like here. Yeah, so it just like goes out here in front of Denton. The camera just distorts. And also an X shows on the screen saying, oh, this thing is disconnected. And as this happens too, uh, the radio, con apparently everyone here was in radio contact with like open mics. So like with a radio, you usually have to press a button. Like if you have a, uh, you got the handheld ones, you click the button so that your mic turns on and you talk to people. But everyone here who's using these radios, and I think all the straw hats have one on now as well. I can see that in the next panel, a panel later where Nami's in, she's wearing one like Luffy's. So the, the these radios now have also been cut off so that it looks like whoever's doing this now is trying to prevent them from communicating each other with the radio. And Luffy notices this. <clears throat> so he was, while well, he's still resting in the that lounge area, or maybe it's, I think it's like a lounge area, I'm going to call it, with Zoro and uh, the, the unconscious bodies of uh, Kaku and uh, Luchi, he's, uh, he's listening in still to keep an eye on his crew, and he hears the radio side cut out too. And uh, that, so he's trying to ask uh, Shaka about what's going on. And now this is where we get uh, the, we cut to now where we start seeing where the other groups are looking around. And I mentioned Scooby-Doo earlier, and this truly is like a Scooby-Doo split up gang, except now, this, in some ways this is more interesting because we got um, a total of, uh, what is it? One, two, three, four, four groups here that they go over. And this will also briefly they show the map that I drew this from here. I'll try and put a, I'll put up a thing on the screen on my thing I, on my video I guess of this map to get an idea and show where they are. So the first we're gonna sh the first group we go to is uh, Nami, Edison, and Brooke. So yeah, like, uh, each of these groups too. One of the uh, at least one of the um, uh, other satellites has gone with some of the straw hats because they obviously know the layout of this place. So we first go to building building A, which is uh, the main one where the control room is, and we're on the third floor, so two floors lower than where I think the command room is. And uh, we got Brooke, yeah, Brooke, Nami, and Edison looking around. And uh, <laughs> Nami, of course, she said in the last chapter she was hoping to find treasure. And, well, this kind of was a little bothersome to me because these people are your friend allies now and you're essentially robbing them. And she kind of is doing this here. <laughs> well, maybe these things, never mind. So what happens here is Nami's getting distracted. <clears throat> I should probably lower my voice too. What happens here is Nami is getting distracted by, uh, she sees this uh, container holding diamonds in there and she's trying she wants to take them with her and uh she throws them all in her backpack and and edison's like has to get her back in line and it's like hey we're we're working we're busy right now can you save this for later actually i realized the lack of him not caring about too much about that maybe these things don't actually belong to them but no they're inside the lab i was a little confused by this because Edison didn't really care that she was taking him with her. 
them more upset that they're she's doing it now when they're trying to find Stella Vegapunk. Uh, um, so uh, so he, she leaves them behind when he gets there. Reminds her, hey, we we're here for something else. And then she's like, I'll come back from later. And, and but uh, um. Uh, Edison and uh, I think I think this is meant to kind of um, uh, dissuade her from taking them. He he informs her that there are man-made uh, diamonds for industrial purposes, and I actually had to look that up because I knew people that diamonds are man-made, and I was trying to figure out their what they're mainly used for, and I, and I forgot like um, so a lot of times there are a lot of um, when you have these places like uh, I saw a, a History Channel episode of about something like this once where they use special saws for cutting through rock and they use diamond tipped blades. These things look essentially like giant chainsaw blades and they have diamonds on them tipped on them to uh, uh, cut through the rock better. And that appears to be that's what these diamonds then must be. They must be manufacturing these diamonds here to. Uh, used for uh, probably to sell them to uh, uh, other businesses uh, that would need them for that kind of um, what's the other word I'm looking for? Hold on. So when I look up on Google about diamond industrial diamonds and di yeah, look up on Google for industrial diamond uses. The abrasive as an abrasive in grinding, drilling, cutting, and polishing. So Nami's. Nami, when she hears this, though, is quite amazed, and the berry signs in her eyes probably grow ten times at the idea that diamonds can now be made. Although I still think she's not realizing these diamonds, perhaps, I couldn't find that if they're worth as much as natural diamonds. Although I assume she could sell them to, um, could sell them to, uh, some of those businesses that need them for that kind of work. Uh, <laughs> and Brooks just looking around with I guess Brooke doesn't say anything in this one he's just like looking around yeah, yeah so in this part Edison's really getting flushed in two by the way trying to keep Nami in line and it looks like Brooks is like yeah I know how she is I can't I can't stop her and he's just really fed up that she's not focusing and helping them <laughs> yeah <laughs> As you we see H almost every straw hat. Some of the others here are all kind of, um, some of them are all a bit amazed with, uh, with the stuff that Vega Punk and there's, there, there's probably there are other people, uh, employees or the lab people maybe uh, working with them. Other researchers are creating. So now we switch over to uh, the gr group two, as I'm calling them, and this one is on the. And still in building A, and they're just one floor below, building a uh, second floor. And uh, this one is Atlas with Na uh, Robin and Chopper. And uh, and here we start with Atlas. She's explaining to um, Ro uh, Chopper how his uh, how her body is, has replaceable parts, especially her face, even because she was severely damaged. By Rob Lucci about seven chapters ago, um, and and he's a, and uh, I also I noticed there's a line they keep using in here. That's the future for you. The, these Vegapunks really have like a marketing thing going on where they talk about, oh, I can yeah, I can do this. We can do this thing now. We can do that thing. That's the future. We we have we're bringing the future. Hurrah! Also, by the way, Chopper is still flying around. I realized. So he's really enjoying using those little boots that let you float around. Uh, I think tagging it even said how Chopper probably felt really great that now he can um, essentially be at the same height as everyone else because he's always in that f chibi form. Although this brings up something quickly as an off tangent. Why, but what kind of bothers me is that why doesn't Chopper just practice staying in his? He has that one. He has a couple of different type of tall forms. Uh, he had the one. We saw a lot, I think, mostly in post, uh, no, sorry, pre-time skip, where he kind of looked like a man-bear thing or whatever. Um, like, I recall, I was starting to watch the beginning of the Water 7 arc last week, and he, him and Robin are together, 
And yeah, and he, at that point, too, he was in his full, he was in his full reindeer form. And then they go to a library, and he, uh, he goes into this taller human hybrid form. And, uh, and I don't think, I saw him use that a couple times there. And I'm sure he's used it sometime before that. I just don't recall a lot of the instances. And I was thinking, too, he's got, I think, that form, which is kind of similar, but he's, he's even more streamlined look. I think he calls it like arm point or there's some name like that. I can't think of it now. And uh, he uses that in battle and his arms become extremely buff and he does like kung fu. No, maybe not kung fu, but some kind of martial arts moves with his, with his hooves that can create devastating physical attacks. And so my point is, why doesn't he use either of those type of forms normally if he's instead of the short form? If, especially if he, say, did feel like, oh, I'm so short around everyone else. Maybe, uh, cause is, it, is that because he's still a kid and those other forms are temporary and it's hard to maintain? Or does he just prefer this short form uh, just because? Uh, but I'm sure there's also like uh, the aspect that he just looks cuter in this form and that's why it's drawn that way by Oda. So... Um, Back to the chapter, as they're going around here, this part of the, what is it, second floor, while Atlas and Chopper are talking together, Robin uh, looks at this big uh, fishbowl type uh, area next to him and, uh, and wonders for a second, <laughs> oh, let's see where this is going. I've just caught on recently by rewatching some of this, um, as I've been watching stuff with Robin and Someone said that, probably teching again, because I watched too much of his content. Robin has like a morbid sense of humor. She'll say these weird things that out of people were kind of like, oh, are you, oh you're kind of a weirdo, aren't you? Uh, I forget the example she said before. But here she just says, hmm, she looks at that tube, and inside there she sees what they find out, they've got uh, organs sitting in these, uh, liquid, and she asks, I wonder if these are Vega Punks. I wonder if she's getting a, I guess getting a chuckle out of this. And, uh, but we find out here that they have now even that Vega Punks, uh, that they have created, uh, man made organs that could be used for like transplants. And this is where Chopper gets extremely excited, much like Nami, where, uh, other, but he is, um, he is, a. uh, uh crying instead of having uh anami also had like hearts at first when she um also i'm trying to slow my voice down she had hearts at first when she was talking uh looking at the diamonds inside the little vault uh container and then the berry signs came second chopper here is excited in a i'm sure of equal level of energy and he's crying though um, yeah, so Robin is having a little, uh, that, doing that little trait she has. She says, oh, I thought these were Vegapunks, and maybe someone just cut him up. And someone yells, you're, is that Atlas yelling, you're scary? <laughs> so Robin is, that's something I find, I, sometimes when, uh, these authors in the mangas create these weird character quirks, some of them don't click well with me you know uh nami i can understand she's actually a thief a burglar before she became their navigator and she uh she probably just gets excited seeing this kind of stuff that you, you someone like her can easily snatch up and then but uh sanji when he's just fawning over every girl around him uh just not it's just like also, I'm trying not, I should probably breathing in the mic. I'm sorry about that. That's the only problem with having it like this. I can't, I'm going to try not to breathe into it. Uh, so when they have these little traits like that, some of them are cute and some of them are just not. So Robin is one I like. So now we go back briefly to Luffy trying again, talking with Shaka to get an assessment of the situation. Uh, wait, so the command room is the fourth floor. So what's that dome above them? Wait a minute. Okay, so yeah, these are, the first two groups were just right below them. 
we had a uh, no, Nami was below, right below, and then and these guys were right below them. Okay, yeah, I'm just trying to figure out what that dome is for in the in the map. So we jump to back to uh, Luffy talking to Shaka, and Shaka is now trying to reach Edison. He's trying, like everyone, to make sure, see what's going on with the radios. Maybe the Den Den Mushies help communicate with these radios. Maybe they're not merely shortwave or something. Um, um, so Luffy comes in and he's saying, my radio's not working either. And I don't think I broke it. I swear, I didn't try to. And Shaka's like, no, it's okay. I, no, come here, look, something's happening. And now he starts showing them how each time he's checking on these uh, the Denden Mushies, this, the, 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 now the, so he, we get a panel here showing he has four separate main areas of his control panel, but each having like multiple little screens within there. And you see multiple ones that are X'd out. Looks like uh, at least uh, two, four, looks like six of them he's showing are out and there's some others still working. But he's telling us here, no, the ca he tells Luffy, these camera feeds, someone is taking them out re systematically, one after another. And then he states here, there's someone else in this lab with us. And, uh, and Luffy, of course, is like, oh, my, what, what does that mean? Who, who, who else could be here? He, he just has a question mark, so I'm just kind of throwing that line in myself. So, uh... Now we continue to with some of the groups. We continue with group three here is Jinbei, not uh, Sanji, and they're with Stussy, and they're on uh, they're they're in one of the other buildings now. They're in the building B, the uh, the right side and the second floor of it. And um, Sanji, of course, is just fawning over Stussy, and even Stussy's trying to. What's she using? Oh, I think Sussie's kind of not annoyed with Sanji's doing this, but she is trying to tell him, you should be focusing. We're trying to find him. Oh, yeah, she's got little, she's giggling. Yeah, she's not, she's kind of enjoying his and falling over her, I guess. Also, this is interesting, to th I just realized, because this is probably what Miss Bakken was probably similarly like. And she probably just is upset, not was upset that she, it was, of course, Whitebeard didn't care for her. The way she did, if that's, I'm guessing. So, um, Sanji, yeah, Sanji's chatting with her a little bit. He's like, oh, I, oh, we, we're going to travel together? This is going to be great. Well, I have another pretty lady to fawn over on my crew, on the ship. And he remembers her from being at Big Mom's party, even. And, uh, of course, so while they're having a little whatever Jean Bay's actually looking around well maybe Stussy probably is too Jean Bay's actually looking around and he points out this part of the lab is much seems much bigger than the others and Stussy explains that this is the where they have the weapons development area and they make it bigger so there's no damage can come in and from like shock waves and destroy uh, cause more damage or cause explosions so finally we get to the fourth group here and this is a uh, well, Lilith, Lilith does show up here. So I, I brought up in my, um, I brought up in my uh, last cup, uh, last couple of times, I, the last video and uh, in the ending of my other video, uh, where I've been talking about my suspicions here about Vega, these Vega of uh, the Vega punks, about one of them possibly being a traitor. I saw that Lilith did not appear at all in the last chapter, and I was using that partially to say, hmm. Maybe she's the traitor because she's because uh, she's missing. Like, where is she now? What could she be doing? And uh, but she is back here. So I, I uh, but I, and I did use other evidence as I mentioned in the beginning of this video of what, what I think if she turned out to be a traitor, what her motivations are. So we'll see about this later. But Shaka's claiming someone else is in the lab. Uh, actually, that still could mean Caribou 2 is there, and we have not seen him, I think, since he talked to Brooke and Zoro several chapters ago. So there's still a possibility that he's doing something, 
actually that could also have partially, and it's not like he hasn't done this before is what I'm about to say, because when he and Luffy and the others had to escape from the Udon prison, he helped do the similar activities to what we are seeing now, where he had to capture, I think they had Den Den Mushies there and other types of security, and he took them all and sucked them into his body because he's a, a special Logia. Oh, by the way, you might hear a little background humming from my furnace. So I wouldn't be too surprised if that's what's happening again, but that does seem too easy, and it would be quite interesting if there's something else going on. I'm hoping it's not as simple as simply caribou. So the last group here is uh, Lilith, and, Lilith and York are together here with Frankie and Usopp. So that's, when I count, yeah, that's all the, uh, all the other uh, Stellas are accounted for here. So I was uh, thinking when we were missing again, but no, they, they, Vegapunk makes sure we, uh, Vegapunk, Oda makes sure we can see them all this chapter. Now we figure out what's going on with, uh, th there's possibility that someone else is here. Sorry if I keep looking this way. I gotta keep remembering my to look to my my camera's on the left. So, so what's happening here? Uh, Lilith has shown off a weapon she's got with her, which is actually more like a looks like it's a, a a a handheld version of what they gave the Mark III pacifistas. Uh, it's some kind of a bubble gun that creates bubbles that bounce anything back. So I don't know if this means that they've taken devil fruit powers. Because we, uh, I was thinking the um, what we saw with that Mark III blocking a bazooka rocket launcher from uh, the last chapter was using Kuma's fruit. But now we see that they have some Lilith here is carrying a weapon. And she describes it as creating a bubble that can bounce anything back. So I don't know if that means she is, uh, uh, they've created something slightly different, but uh, similar to what Kuma, Kuma's power is. So uh, he's, she's shown that to uh, uh, Usopp. Who, I don't know if he's supposed to be shown ex ex surprise or, sh or being afraid or both, but uh, Frankie's there actually calling out the Vegapunk trying to get his attention, see if he will respond. And York's just behind there, ready to fall asleep again. So while they're doing this and looking around, they reach the area, finally, where Pythagoras was last seen. York is the one, York spots this, uh, um, York looks ahead, and then Usopp, too, looks, and they both, they see Pythagoras' poor body there. So, uh, Hats off for Pythagoras, the poor fellow. He got struck in it by some unknown assailant. He will not be forgotten, and his, him and his uh, loyalty to Vegapunk will never be forgotten. Poor guy. All burnt to a crisp and everything. I wonder what kind of weapon it is. <laughs> I'm, I'm fooling. I'm not good at doing this. Pyth uh, Pythagoras is okay. Uh... What happened here, when I saw this, I realized what happened right away. The others run up, and they think he's uh, dead. And, uh, and they're like, uh, <laughs> Frankie's like, oh my gosh, his head was blown off? That's, this is gory. Was that what, and someone else is talking about how, like, this is what, what the explosion was we heard? And, uh... So Sufsop sees someone else ahead of them on the bridge and prepares to shoot at them, but it's actually just uh, Pythagoras's, like, this must be Pythagoras's actual body. And when I saw this, I realized what was coming with this, because if you go back to chapter, um, I had it here, 1065, I think, when uh, the Straw Hats are fighting with S-Shark, um, Pythagoras there at one point... He gets really excited. I forget what he was getting excited about. But his, it shows briefly a panel where his little body jumps out of the bigger... Oh, yeah, that's what it was. He's, um, he was taking notes while watching the Straw Hats fight uh, S-Shark. 
and he's getting really excited and doesn't and then he explains exclaims and speaks aloud like oh i gotta use the restroom i can't go now though will you dork will you help me out and it showed his little body jump out of the um of this bigger body he's housed himself in for some reason so what happened here so yeah he's okay but his it looks like the main body he was housing himself in has been burnt to a crisp because you got like these little legs that they show here and then showed before uh, that sit inside that big body and that makes his he's got this little, he's like shaped like a football with that little he's got the little round that wind up thing on his head still and uh, so like that it looked when he's inside that main body it just looks like a little part of his head like without he doesn't really have a neck though when he had that other thing it looked like he was just sitting in the vest area of the um, suit. Oh, I didn't read it. I'm reading it. Sorry. So, uh, Pythagoras is like, the Pythagoras is like, hey, don't, like, like, I'm okay. Don't shoot. Or, eh, I'm doing this all bad today. So, the others are like, hey, what happened? An accident? And he's like, no, something's going on. Guys, guys, I got to tell you something. I thought my eyes were playing tricks. Something's wrong. And then he's, uh, he's about to tell us something that's going on. Uh, oh, maybe that's right. But he's like, then he realizes York isn't there. And uh, what happens here, York is like, is ahead of them on the bridge. And she's over there with uh, uh, Boa's Seraphim. I forget what they actually call hers. S, uh, I forget the name for hers. And she's sitting there patting Boa in the head. Boa, it's Beryl Seraphim, I mean. I don't want to say Boa. And, um, oh, that's right, yeah. So, Boa, the York's patting her here, and we think, oh, it's so cute. Boa starts, you prepares to use her um, love powers, the fruit powers, and she turns York into stone. And uh, um, Edison tries to stop her right before this happens. Um... So she does this and then kicks York over. Hopefully she won't break. She doesn't look like she looks like she's okay. And this Lilith screams at it and like, "What are you doing? You should be listening to us." And um, and it says, "What you can't do this. Be doing this. We commanded you to stop." And she tr and tells her, "I command you to not do anything else." But the seraphim has a smirk on his face, her face, and then she takes her hand out and shoots a laser blast at them and the others uh it destroys the bridge and the others start falling down um everyone else and lilith is like what's going on they don't they realize we're not the vegapunk we're vegapunk and let edison's like right that's what i'm trying to say they're they're not accepting orders anymore Okay, so that makes sense more now. It must have been, I think it must have been her, Boa Seraphim, that attacked, uh, uh, did the actual attack on Edison earlier. Yeah, someone else has done this order and is making them to her do this. And so, uh, uh, Frankie's like, you guys didn't realize, what are you saying? You didn't see this twist coming. You didn't realize this was going to happen. And he's like, hey, pff, blah, 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 blah. I'm so sorry. <sighs> so Frankie's like, what should we do? Should I fight back with this? Fight back? Return fire? And Shaka, the Seraphim's just up there staring down at them. And now Lilith trying to, is trying to get back to uh, hold a Shaka and realizes that they've lost radio combat, co contact. And uh, she says to, to Frankie, like, don't joke around. We, don't, we can't fight those things. Designed them to be, we designed them to be the most powerful beings. And this part of statement is, is kind of interesting to me. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm thinking they're underestimating Frankie. 
I'm really hoping in the next chapter or two, if this escalates as I suspect it could, that we get to see how good Frankie has progressed as uh, self uh, improving his mach- mach- machine b- prowess in, for battle uh, and how he would fare against one of these things that made by Vegapunk as someone who's quite possibly. He's the closest one who's an equal to him, realistically, to me, as far as like me- me- mechanical genius goes. And I think he could fa- do fairly well, especially in the part that he also has laser blast uh, abilities, a uh, 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 technology. Even uh, who was it? And when he was fi- when they were fighting the S, the S- Shark, uh, I'll pull it up here. I think it was Edison there at the time too watching. He couldn't believe that uh, someone else had a laser, and he was like, "Like what? What? How did that person have a laser? Who? Who is this guy?" And um, let me see. Right, he shot. The others tried attacking. He used his radical beam. Yeah, that was Edison back then. So. Um, Lilith was actually there too, and she was quite upset at the time because obviously if, uh, Frankie had destroyed him. It, the cost of making these apparently is exponential. So, uh, also, by the way, on this, co- this topic of how strong these things are, we know that Zoro, I think that Zoro would handle fighting that the S Hawk, as they call them, Mihawks, quite well. He already had a brief clash at it and probably has a decent idea of the gauge of its strength and uh, because these things are technically kids I think Vega, uh, Zoro could have a chance against that thing because it might not be if it was an adult I suspect it could outclass Zoro just saying you know, there's a possibility if these things come to a fight I think Lilith is underestimating how powerful the Straw Hats really are she doesn't she's she's this is the same thing we see a lot where these characters, they haven't seen these other allies or friends in battle, what they can do. And they see the enemy, or in this case, their own creation, and know how powerful it is, and assume, oh, it's too powerful for you. You don't stand a chance. It's the most powerful thing ever. So, uh, these seraphims are scary. I'm saying not to say they are not, but I do think that if this comes to a fight the, the, the straw hat there's four of them and we got all the straw hats together I I think this will fight will be not as one sided as Lilith thinks that's all so we get near the end of the chapter now and uh, now we're back in the command room and uh, Zoro's calling for Luffy and not the command room, we're in the lounge area I'm calling it Luffy, Zoro calls uh, uh, Luffy to come back, and Luffy and Shaka come running over to see what is going on because there's like I think an explosion. Yeah, there's an explosion there, and what we f- the we see that uh, Kuma and Mihawk's seraphims are have entered in through the wall there, and uh, uh, and then Shaka tries to order them to stop. Uh, um, uh, do attacking and uh, Zoro's like, "What can you can stop them? Right? They came in here suddenly and tried to take out Kaku and uh, and uh, Luchi. So that was interesting too. Now these things are targeting Kaku and Luchi. Whoever did this must be ordering to kill everyone here. It seems. And Zoro's actually defending those two. There, while they're cuffed up, he says, "Like I couldn't let them die in cuffs. That would leave a bad taste in my mouth." And uh, then the um, the the two uh, the S bear uh, S bear S uh, S hawk attack them again with uh, using a laser beam. As you know, the S bear uses a laser beam, and uh, Mihawk swings his sword at them, and the others have to. Everyone has to jump away. Actually. Yeah, and as they're doing that, uh, yeah, Zoro looks like he must be holding Kaku, and Luffy jumps away holding Shaka and Luchi to, to get everyone get out of the way of the blast in time from their combined attack. 
and here's where else and so here the next part here is uh shaka is looking at the situation and he says if they're not taking my orders that means someone else must another vegapunk must have issued them an order and here he lays out what i was just trying to say to us uh shaka that in between with everything that's happening the barrier seal us in our communication just went out and this this is, looks like someone's trying to kill all of us and as this is happening, uh, Luchi and uh, Kaku actually wake up, and re her, oh, they also overheard the part. They must have woke up a little before, and they realized that the uh, overheard the part about the the seraphims trying to kill them. And uh, they talked to a Luchi. A Lu they talked to Luffy and uh, Zoro, and actually said, "Guys, can we? Uh, how about uh, this is looking pretty bad. How about we uh, set aside our differences for now and?" uncuff us so we can help you we'll form an alliance <laughs> and the chapter ends with Zoro and Luffy like I don't want to do that <laughs> so yeah this is the end of the chapter I'm sorry I was looking at I made a note of a thought I had earlier to uh, add to this I'm starting to get suspicious here Anyways, let's, uh, actually, let's bask into this a minute. Holy shit, a lot of shit just happened. We have everyone breaking apart. The Seraphim are attacking. And um, Luchi and Kaku are going to try to work together to fight them. That, that too, though, could increase the odds of them winning against these things if they truly are, let's say, indestructible as the, uh, that angle of it as Lilith may claim they are. Not saying they're actually indestructible, but maybe the damage that destroyers can to do to them, even at this point with their own strength, like Luffy and Zoro or Sanji's and Jinbei, maybe that wouldn't be enough to even stop these things. If they have two more people on their side like that, just, they may stand a chance, uh, let's just say. So, <laughs> I think they're going to have to do that because uh, uh, what choice do they have? They're all gonna, these things got these laser blasts and uh, that's going to be a hard thing to avoid for some of them. I know, I know Luffy's got the speed in the team, so he could probably get close to one of those things. Uh, he'll have to be careful. I don't know how fast those things are either. Can he even go into gear 5th again? Uh, so what, what's going on here? I'm starting to almost think, just because we saw... We saw all these seraphim, uh, seraphim, the yellow satellites accounted for that there's someone else doing this here. That maybe that someone that even the other satellites are not aware of. I, my first thought this morning is like, is there another satellite, like a secret satellite that has been unleashed and is trying to kill them all? And why, if so? And, um, It's just like it could have said they say it has to be another Vegapunk because so now the the uh, when a command is issued by one person already, even someone at the same command level, the hierarchy, cannot order that command to stop. It has to, until that command is over or someone with a higher authority comes out there and stops them. As we just saw, was it the last chapter? When the seraphim came or oh, was it the chapter before, really? The, when the Seraphim were ordered by Lucci to start destroying the lab, the Stussy could not order them to stop. And it was up, uh, Edison and Lilith got out there, and it was I think Edison's command actually was the one finally listened, to, uh, heard by them, and they stopped uh, doing that. So now it's going to take, unless they can either stop these things or stop, uh, someone else uh, with a higher authority. Now, wait, when they say Vegapunk, the authority, does that mean Vegapunk himself can't, can Estella, I forget, does Estella have a slightly higher authority than the, um, than his satellites? So when it shows the hierarchy here, I'd have to go find a list of that again. All the Vegapunks are equal so even the Stella one, I was thinking for a second, Stella Vegapunk could be a higher, is a higher than them. But no, only 
at this point now, only one of the five elders, if this hierarchy is as accurate as we as says, and uh, there's no loopholes created by Vegapunk, the only one of the five elders now can order these things to actually stop. So we're in a pickle here, but in some ways, this pickle could be also solved momentarily if that Saturn comes up, comes in in the next chapter, uh, and he sees what's happening and wants to and decides to stop it and whatever. So, uh, hell. I don't know what to say anymore. There's just so much, so much to think about here. Um, also, wait a minute, too. Can't they hold those things off with like that weapon that Lilith says she has a bubble gun that can block any attack? I'm surprised she didn't try to use that right away. I wonder if she still got that thing intact. She was holding it as she was falling. Could she just use that against those things? Can that block one of those laser blasts? She said it can block any kind of attack, right? Yeah, holy shit. Yeah, right. Strongest bubbles that can bounce anything back. Oh, man. Also, we still don't know if uh, the S-Hawk has a devil fruit, do we? Do we? I'm thinking if Luffy uh, and Zoro has to fight that thing, what other tricks does it have up its sleeve? It doesn't look like it uses laser blasts. It just swings stuff through its sword. Does that Gugetsu Tenshua, Tensha type attack? Also, the one last thing I was going to say was, uh, no, I'll save that. I got something I want to save until we get more information. I don't know thought about Vegapunk and what this could mean, but uh, we're gonna have to. I want to see what's happening next chapter first. I guess that's where I'm the chapter for now. Thanks for watching.